Hey guys, welcome to Big Laws Official. Uh, we're back in the strength shed today. Uh, Harry's training with me. We're gonna be focusing on some squats and some deadlifts today and a bit of conditioning at the end as normal. Harry's gonna put me through some, well, I, don't know, I don't know what you've got planned, but. Whole squats and assault bike. Beautiful. Yeah. First thing we're gonna do though, we've got um, tempo pull squats and deadlifts today. Um, but before we do that, we're just gonna go through a quick warm up routine. So just going through the warm up. Um, Starting off with the, the band around the, around the knees, trying to activate the glutes more than anything else with this. Where we put it around the knees? Around the tops of the knees. Lying on your back. Okay, we're gonna take Lawrence through a little core uh, activation circuit now, and we're just gonna start off with a hollow rock, but we're gonna put one foot by his bum, one leg straight. That's just gonna put your lower back into a safe position there, take a bit of pressure off than if we're doing it both legs straight. We're just trying to get it activated, not kill it here. From here, he's gonna hold both of his shoulders. He's gonna crunch up a little bit, just bring his rib cage down. He's gonna lift both feet off the floor and then just get into a rocking pattern, just making his abs there work. Okay, so he's holding that crunch position as he does it. He's not coming out of the crunch. Keeping that quad locked, that foot by his bum. Perfect, and go down, we'll switch sides, upper body first, rib cage down, and then get himself rocking. Three, four, and he'll start now feeling his abs to burn a little bit there. Yep. From there, we're gonna move into just a dead bug. Okay, so the idea of this, he's just gonna be bracing his core like he's gonna be in squatting and deadlifting, and he's gonna start opening up his hips, moving through his hips, moving through his knees, but maintaining that brace position there. So feet up at 90-90. From there, he's gonna straighten out one leg, okay? So there, he's starting to open up his hips, so where you might be tight in the hips, okay? Open up your hips, but while he does it, he's tensing his abs, okay? He's not just going through one, two, staying loose through the midsection, you know? He's just gonna do maybe five each side, but every time he does it, he's gonna take a deep breath like he would at the top of a squat position, and then straighten out that leg, bring it back in, big breath, brace, opposite side. So if you give us, say, three each side, Lawrence. Perfect, so you see, that's tight there. Good. Opens up this hip. Good. Heels in line with his knees. Good. Good pressure, nice, good. One more. And just doing, say, three each side like that, he's gonna feel a lot more than just hanging his legs in the air and just shooting them out, cycling there. So think about what you're doing. Don't just go through the motions. Think, you're trying to brace your core, you're protecting your spine while you move through your hips and your knees, because really that's what you're gonna be doing when you're squatting. You're gonna take a deep breath, brace your abs, protect your spine, then you're gonna move through the hips and the knees into that position. You still wanna be solid in that bottom position there as he uses his hamstrings, his quads, his glutes to power up, okay? Yep. So from there, we're just gonna go into a plank. And what he's gonna think about on this plank is he's gonna tense his quads, he's gonna squeeze his glutes, and that will put his position in so he's working his core here. He's not just hanging on his lower back. So if we straighten out, tense the quads, squeeze your glutes, you can see his glutes come on there. So every time he locks out that deadlift or locks out that squat, his glutes are gonna come through and they're on, okay? Well, that is braced there. Now you can see he's got good neutral spine there. He's not overextending, and a lot of people when they plank, their glutes will be off, their lower back will mm -hmm. be sinking. Like so this is off and they feel it more in their lower back than say on their anterior core through there. Good, from there we're just gonna go into a side plank, working his obliques. Driving up, getting that bottom oblique firing, squeezing his glutes, and then Lawrence is a big one on this. He always says when you squat, you don't just want to go forwards into that, but outwards as well. Good, opposite side. I'm sure Lawrence can tell you a bit more about that when we come to squatting. Driving the hips up, squeezing your glutes hard, that bottom oblique firing. Good, and relax. The last thing I do before squatting particularly, but on deadlifts as well. I like to just get myself used to squatting down into a deadlift position. This is something I think is really good for people that struggle to hit depth. Very, very simple. Just gonna hold a deadlift uh, squat position. So I like to hold onto the rack. 
Um, for people that really struggle, I don't know how you, whether you do this with clients, I sometimes put a band onto the, to the rack and around their waist, just to take a bit of the weight. Um, particularly, you know, I've got a few older clients that their jobs, truck driving and stuff like that, where they're just sat in the same position, their mobility in their hips isn't so good. So something nice and simple like this, get yourself in your squat stance and just come down as far as you can go into a squat position. Try to maintain a high chest, try not to sort of fall forward like this. You're trying to make sure you keep that chest up and then deep breath and sink down. And then just in this position, I'll start kind of mobilizing the hips, pushing the knee out. Same with the other leg. Tend to do like eight on each side and then both together. And I just try and hold this position for one to two minutes. Controlling my breathing, just making sure, keep that chest up. And also try not to sort of sink back like this. Try and maintain so you could, without holding to, onto this, still come up into your squat position. You're trying to mimic the same position you'll be in the bottom of your squat. Um, I think like Lawrence said, a common thing I think when people start squatting off, they, in that squat they don't realise how open they need to be. You want to make sure you're loading your adductors, they're strong muscles and especially getting you out of the hole in the bottom of the position. Not only do your adductors bring your leg in but they'll also help extend your hips. So when you are in that bottom position there, don't just sort of sit there, think about pushing your knees out into that position there. If you can start strengthening your adductors when you squat, you know, if you're getting sore the next day in that area, that's a good thing there, you know, because you're missing out if you're not using those big muscles. Right, last thing, and it might seem really simple, is, um, you know, if you've got a training program that says, I don't know, 100 kilos for five sets of five, let's go real simple, uh, and people think, how do I warm up for that? You do lighter weights before you get your working set. So when I design programs for myself and my clients, I'll write down their working sets but I expect them to do warm-up sets beforehand. Today, I'm gonna to be going to approximately 200 kilos, nothing ridiculously crazy. Um, and I don't just chuck 200 kilos on the bar, I go through the movement. So we're gonna start off with, this bar is 20 kilos, we're gonna put a 20 each side, 60 kilos, just going through repetitions and focusing on technique. And that's a, a big thing I'm sort of, you know, I try and point out to everyone, try and use your warm-up sets as technical practice for your movement. Try and learn to become skillful in the movements that you, that you do. So don't just, I won't just blast through hundreds of reps on, on this. I try not to tire myself out too much with the warm-ups. I'm just trying to make sure everything's firing, I'm hitting depth, and I feel like, you know, I'm getting my body warmed up for the bigger weights to come. when I'm talking about bracing, normally we're talking about the abdominal pressure. So a lot of people, when they think about bracing, just push their abs forwards. But you can see as soon as I do that, my lower back starts to bend and it puts you in a compromised position. Try and think about your midsection. I like sort of this analogy. Think of your midsection like a shaken up can of Coke. And all those bubbles inside that, that can are trying to expand in every direction. Same thing when it comes to your bracing. All of your muscles in the inside the midsection, we're trying to expand in every direction. It's easier when you've got a belt on because you can feel yourself. Deep breath, pushing into the belt in the front, expanding at the sides, and also pushing your lower back into the belt at the back. You're trying to create that pressure through your whole midsection. So you're nice and strong. It'll keep you safer, keep you protected, but it also will help in terms of power up, but keeping the, the, the legs connected to the upper body. Very quickly, when you're, when you're squatting, we're using the safety bar today, so it's a little bit nicer on the elbows and um, shoulders. It's a little bit harder in terms of squatting. It taxes your, your core a little bit more. But when you're unracking and squatting, you should be going through the same process all the time. So Harry should be taking a deep breath, getting underneath the bar. He should stand up with both feet balanced, 
And then he shouldn't take more than four steps to get into position. I like to step back with my left foot, step back with my right foot, and then step out with my left, step out with my right. Practice that movement so you're not doing lots of little steps before you squat, because those extra little steps will drain energy. So he's in position, bracing through the midsection, he wants to expand in every direction. Now he pushes his hips back slightly, opens up the hips, and then drives up, focusing on pressure through the heels, the big toe, and the outside of the little foot. Excellent. Nice and tight through the midsection, driving up. Feel easy? Yeah, felt good. Excellent. So we're working up to a comfortable triple and then we're going to back off the weight and do some uh, tempo pause squats today. So looking at a slow descent between three and five seconds, one second pause at the bottom and then trying to power up. It's really good for focusing on technique and getting yourself really confident in the deep part of the squat, which is where most people tend to struggle. I think the other thing it's good for is um, I think maybe when you're new to squatting, and same with bench pressing, sometimes you just drop a little bit. Yeah. You, you're worried about, you're getting too heavy weight and you hope that bounce will, will help you up. Whereas I think when you see people who start getting really good at squatting and benching, they control that negative. So I think if you go down wrong, it's gonna be hard to come up right. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You, you often find the people that dive bomb squat yeah. have a lot more injuries with knees yeah. issues, particularly as they get older. Um, you want to be in control of the movement throughout. Nice. You see, we're not taking too long a rest between the warm-ups. Tend to focus on longer rest as the, as the weights get heavier, but with your warm-ups, it's fine, you can get through them pretty quickly. I'm not, I'm not trying to squat anything heavy at the moment, I just like squatting. Had a bit of a knee injury for a few months, didn't do any squats, so just slowly getting back into it. What are you wearing today, Lars, eh? I've got a new um, Team Loss top. These will be available soon. Got a couple of different designs coming out. I'm quite excited about them. Um, there's a fun Uncle Loss top coming as well, <laughs> which is Liz's favorite. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, these will be available from my online store very, very soon. So make sure you look out for that. Easy, good, come on, keep tight, squeeze the elbows, drive. Good. You want to try just doing a single with 170? Yeah. A single with 170, maybe a single with 180? Yeah. I don't think you've squatted this heavy in a while, have you? Um, I've been doing more front squats, to be honest with you. So I'll go up to around 140 range for front squats and then hit anywhere be... for about sets of five. So this it should have been. Okay. What's your best ever squat? My best ever squat is 232 in a powerlifting competition cool. with uh, belt and knee wraps. I'm sure it's not, eh? I used to be good at squatting. <laughs> what is your best squat? Most I've ever done, I've done 400 in the gym, but um, I've done 380 very easily in a powerlifting comp. Um, and I'm, I've been a lot better for reps. I did 250 for 20 on a safety bar, which is probably my it's nasty. Yeah. best set ever. I don't think people appreciate how tough the safety bar is. It's quite draining. It's, a bit more like a front squat in terms of that it, bottom it, it position. It taxes the midsection more. It's wide. easier to hold, yeah, it's less strain through your wrists and elbows, but the actual squat in itself. I really like it for strongman because, firstly, it doesn't take as much out of your elbows yeah. and shoulders, so 
your fresher for the pressing movements. You think of like the old pressing movements you've got to do in Strongman. Um, and also for th when it comes to things like yokes, car walks, those events that involve strong midsection. Yeah. Really yeah, helps. as you get heavier, you definitely feel that bottom position where it's trying to tip you forward yeah. a bit more than the, a The common thing for everyone, squat. they want to pull down. Yeah. But as soon as you pull down, the bar presses into the back of your neck. So you if forward. you think you pull, that bar pushes you forward just like that. So what I try and get people to do is push their elbows in and push up. It's, it just makes it a little bit easier and keeps you a bit safer. Let's go. Nice and tight. Chest up. Elbows in. And drive up. Easy. Good work. Nice. So the great thing with using various different plates is you, you kind of <laughs> you don't figure out what's on the bar. So Harry just did 10 kilos more than yeah. he was expecting then. So, <laughs> so I'm quite happy with that. Happy yeah. with that, <laughs> I thought it was 170. <laughs> yeah. Right, so we've got what, 230 now? Believe it or not, this is the most I've squatted in ages. And what's the reasoning for going heavier before we actually do our working sets with the tempo pull squats? <laughs> um, well, <laughs> there's no real reason if I'm totally honest. I mean, sometimes I do. Sometimes I do plan on, on purposely going heavier, um, focusing on, on just the main movement, yeah. the squat, squatting as if you would yeah. in a competition. Then the tempo squats are an assistance movement to the squat. So yeah. you can't really, don't compare them to what your max squat is. You know, I'm not gonna be using a heavy weight at all on the tempo. It's all about technique. It's all about getting stronger. But I do like going heavier on certain exercises, not to maximum poundage, but when I drop down to those lighter Makes weights for repetitions, lighter. your body's expecting yeah. the weight you just had on your back. And all of a sudden, it feels so much easier. Yeah. I find it better to kind of almost use these singles as a warm up yeah. still. So I class these as like a warm up before my working set. They're not max effort. You know, I'm not trying to go to 100%. Uh, if you go to 100%, that's very different. It'll tax your central nervous system. But because it's heavier than the weight I'm going to be using for the repetitions, it just makes it feel a little bit lighter. When I, I definitely it. find that. I find doing a heavier single, like you said, even if it's not your max, yeah. it's the, the, the reps feel nicer. So say if I know your, your, your single is 180 and you might have hit 120 on the way up, I find when you come back, back down, down to 120, feels it feels a lot easier than the first As long as you don't go to like max effort. Yeah. If you go to max effort, that's different. So it's, you know, you've got to be smart with it. You know, I don't want to chuck you know, 350 kilos on here now and grind out a rep because then I'm going to be you know, When fatigued. you did your 250 for 20, did you do a heavier weight first? I, I went up to 370 before. Okay, so that's a good idea. So that's pretty heavy. 370. Yeah, 370 on the safety. Yeah, um, yeah I, I did. Uh, and that, that really helped me because yeah. the, through the 250 felt warm up felt a lot heavier. 120 <laughs> kilos off. Yeah, yeah. It was lighter. Nice and open. Stand tall. <laughs> You sound like a rhinoceros snorting. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. <laughs> 200 kilos can feel heavy if I'm not really focused. Okay. So you need to get yourself fired 200 up. kilos is heavy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, it, it's like lifting that now, it's crazy to think I did 250 for 20. You know, yeah. I think that a three was hard then, but it's about mindset, being all, depending on what kind of shape you're in. <laughs> it all, you know, I built up to that. Yeah. I did, um, you know, proper training cycle of high rep squats, condition my body to do it. You can't just sort of jump in and do that kind of crazy stuff. Um, right, Lawrence, so we're going for five reps, you say? Five reps. And about a five second descent and a pause at the bottom? Yeah. Okay. Drive. Come on, two more. Okay, stop. Drive. Knees out, knees out. Drive. It's nice. Sort of just doing that heavier rep before. When you yeah. walk it out, it feels nice, but then those slow reps start to catch up with you. And it's hard, you've really got to focus on the movement. I think on that last rep, I had a little bit of a shift from my knee and it's, it's trying to, every single time you do a rep, pick up on those 
little mistakes and try and put them right on the next set. Good, come on. Control, control, control. Pause. Up. Nice. Good. Good set. Tell you one thing. You probably want someone counting the reps. It's easy to forget what number of reps you're on. I'm out of time to help the semi video. Oh, I miscounted. Yeah. <laughs> miscounted. Yeah. <laughs> So just because we're, we're filming today, we're going to have a little bit of fun on the deadlift before we do some dimmel deadlifts, which we're focusing on for, for glute development. We're going to try and set a gym record on the deadlift. A home gym record? A home gym record. We don't really have one at the moment though, do we? So it doesn't really count. <laughs> I, think, I think I've done 250 in here. How many weights? Reps. What do you have in here, weight-wise? We'll see. We'll see what we can get up no, to. No, you've done more. Have I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you did um, 280 or 290. Was that just for a photo? Yeah, we started lifting. <laughs> yeah, I still have to lift Okay, I remember. <laughs> so the gym record is 290, we're going to say. Okay. So Harry, are you going to beat that? I'm going to try 180. <laughs> 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 and iffy, what not. I don't know, I haven't deadlifted. You haven't deadlifted heavy in a long, long time, yeah. So uh, you used to yeah. do strongman and you weren't a bad deadlifter, but. Um, it's never my best. It's never, your... it was never my favourite lift. But you were, you were similar to me in that you were pretty good as an athlete. Like, he, he was good at. Moving. Yeah, moving. moving events. Far You're quite away. explosive overhead yeah, as quite well. Quite fit, medleys. Overhead wasn't too bad. Just yeah, stones, solid things all like round. That. Yeah, Happy. lacked a bit of strength, really. <laughs> a lot of strength. You lack strength. <laughs> <You're like stronger. laughs> There'll be people watching this saying, like, you don't lack strength. It's um, it is, it's all. I think it's all relative. I think, you know, I, I'll, I'll say oh, I'm weak at the moment, and obviously I'm not weak at the moment, but I'm weak for me. Um, and then like Harry's obviously used to having me around, so. Yeah. And I'm used to being around the best strong men in the world. So you sort of just get used to these weird numbers that are actually, it you know, in terms, of, in terms of reality, it's it just not It doesn't mean anything. Yeah, you're just you're the same as everyone else. Whether you lift 300, 100, if you enjoy training, you enjoy training, you should do it for yourself. Oh, if you're doing it for someone else, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. But so. I, th I think people sort of, you go on Instagram and, you know, you see all these videos of these people lifting ridiculous weights and you think you're inferior. Yeah. But in reality, you know, a 200 kilo deadlift is, is big in most gyms. I know some gyms where no one can lift 200 kilos. It's just you get used to the environments that you're in and I'm, yeah. I'm used to being around some of the absolute strongest men in the world. Yeah. So when I'm lifting 300 kilos, I feel weak. So just to warm up with, we're going to do double overhand deadlifts, just to test the grip a little bit. And then once the grip goes, we'll, we'll go to the, uh, either strap or reverse grip. Good double overhand. 180-200 for you. <laughs> not 160. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bad. Nice. Good. Yeah, anything over 200 is decent. It was 180 a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> anything, over, anything over 220 is decent. Whatever he does, I'll just add 20 kilos to it. <laughs> Obviously, I know you both very well, but for people that don't, are you two competitive against each other? Probably not so much in terms of strength, yeah. because I think it's just pointless. But yeah, as kids, we were very competitive. It's I think. Yeah, I think as kids we were, but it's a good thing now. Like, I think we'll train harder. Yeah. When we'll do stuff like we'll do conditioning in a bit. So Harry's better than me at that stuff. But it makes you I'm work I'm going to be stronger than him in the gym. Yeah. I, you know, 
I don't think we are competitive in the gym, to be honest. No. Because what's the point? It's like, you know, I'm a professional swimmer. And without sounding that, I, I, it's not my... It's not your thing. It's not my thing. It's not my it urge. I, I want Lawrence to, you know, I've always wanted to... Hey, you've supported me, like, always. Yeah, in, in absolutely. What I do. I think, and both of us have. I used to help you, yeah. like you with like other sports that yeah. you did. Absolutely. We always yeah, I used to play table tennis, and Lawrence used to coach me for that, and I played for England for that. And um, no, we've, we're more supportive yeah. um, than competitive. I don't but, think we're but too like, bad. As, as kids, we were. As kids, we were. We've like, had a few. Um, but our dad was really competitive to the was. point of he would cheat against us yeah. to win, like a board game. Yeah. So, yeah, a few tears when we were younger. I remember that. <laughs> and. Um, we used to love like wrestling and things like that. Yeah. We were sending each other to the hospital a few times. <laughs> I remember I think I gave you a bloody nose. And, um, I think mum had to get a hammer out of your hand once because you were trying yeah. to hit me with a hammer. Yeah. Without I think I was just watching you TV. tombstoned me onto like a, a corner of a... Do you remember that? And mum had to take us to hospital. At a, but we were actually, we never blamed each other for that. No. I remember Lawrence actually once cut my hair and he cut my ear and our dad came in and I didn't want Lawrence to get in trouble so I was like, Holding my ear, and uh, so we sort of, we are competitive, but we've got each other's back as yeah, well. Yeah, we've always got each other's yeah. back. Do you remember that? <laughs> Although everyone knows that story now. Yeah. <laughs> I basically looked after him as a as a kid. Yeah, my mum and mum and dad had their own restaurant, and literally yeah, my job was looking after yeah, him. Yeah. <laughs> Give me nice. a haircut, and, and you know. Beating him up. Yeah. And a lot of people thought he was my dad. I remember we went to <laughs> Barbados on holiday and um, Lawrence was like 16 and people legit thought he was my dad. And because our dad had grey hair, they thought he was my granddad. And I remember going down the swimming pool once, he was like, oh, that's your dad and that's your granddad. <laughs> you, <laughs> you were. And, no, and, no, and nothing's changed. <laughs> you were a very big 16 year old, to be fair, weren't you? I was a big 16 year old. Yeah. Well, what were you, 20 stone at 16? Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, you were. Yeah. yeah. And always mature looking. <laughs> mature looking. Let's go with that. Yeah. Full, full on beard at 14. Uh, 180. Yeah. Easy weight. <laughs> we'll do pull ups in a second and see how many pull ups Lawrence gets. <laughs> Not competitive at all, are we? <laughs> are you competitive, Lizzie? No, I'm mellow. <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> I can tell some funny competitive stories about you. No, as well. don't. <laughs> right, one eighty. You get this. This is good. Oh, <laughs> no pressure. This is like me doing one pull. -up. Yeah. Easy, and he held it! There we go, no, don't exert yourself, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence's got to do two pull-ups. <laughs> oh, do two pull-ups if you get the next weight. What's the next weight? 200, that'll be nice. 200 or 210? I haven't deadlifted 180 for about five years. Got this one. <laughs> Yeah, there. Oh, there. I didn't put that there. We are typical boys in terms of we're rubbish at finding things. 200? 200. I got a lot of more. <laughs> You're also big Rocky fans. Yeah. Big Rocky fans. Big Rocky fans, big wrestling fans. Yeah. Karate Kid. <laughs> Karate Kid, yeah. <laughs> Have you been watching Cobra Kai? I've, I've watched all of Cobra yeah, Kai. Enjoying it? Yeah. yeah. Cheesy shit, but I love it. I kind of prefer Johnny now to uh, I know. To uh, Daniel. Dan Daniel's son. Liz, where's my belt? <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you deadlifted 200? I honestly can't remember this. So this will be fun. <laughs> Come on, H. Go on, H. Go on. Yes! I'll give you that. I wouldn't give myself that. <laughs> Starting to roll out at the top. Just have a good lift it. <laughs> Let's check 230 on. With straps though, you'd have been fine with that. Oh, 50 He'd be fine with it with a reverse grip. 
Yeah. 15 it's, reps was strapped. Oh, yeah, to be fair, that was double overhand. Double yeah. overhand is way harder than... Yeah, don't get it twisted. No, it's sorry, not fun. sorry, H, I'm not giving you the credit you clearly deserve. <laughs> Starting to look serious. It's a great thing with bumper plates. <laughs> is that why you have bumper plates? No, it was all we could get. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are nice. We like them. Um, For the grind. The ATX kit is really good, actually. Yeah. But we do need to uh, invest in some probably steel calibrated plates at some point. Right, 230. Easy. More? Try 250. We need to. Um, I thought you were doing the gym record as well. Oh, we could do 250 double overhand and then, then the gym record. Okay. And then, right, let's go. Do you, wanna, do you wanna try 200 with straps just to see the difference? Or even a reverse grip? <laughs> no. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sure. Let's do it. Okay. See if it makes a difference yeah. in terms of, did it feel like your grip went or, your, or was it just a hard? It was, no, it was definitely yeah. my grip. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is, as soon as that grip starts opening, there's nothing you can do. It doesn't matter how strong your, your legs and back are. It just goes. Come on, man. Right. The arms straight, chest up. Nice and easy. 200 kilo lifter. I'll take it. Yeah, you just take it. <laughs> Super. Good. What's on the bar, Lassie? 250 kilos. Do you know what your max overhand is? I think I've done 280 before, something like that. Oh, oh, there we go. Nice. Ooh, it's not bad. Not bad. So we're going for a gym record now? Gym, gym record now. It looks pretty cool. But we're not doing double overhand anymore. No, <laughs> double overhand, 300 double overhand would be pretty impressive. I, th I think I could do it with training, but not just <laughs> right now. I'm gonna do this without straps and without a belt. Just to, you know, be fair to everyone else that trains here. <laughs> H. H. I had the record before you. <laughs> no, gotta, gotta dangle the carrot. <laughs> okay. Come on. Easy. What was that you were just demonstrating? Uh, we're just doing dimmel deadlifts now. This is really to focus on the glutes and the lockout of the deadlifts. Not heavy. Um, going for 12 to 15 reps. Really trying to work what is essentially my weakest part of the lift. Um, get my glutes engaged. I'm so powerful off the floor. I've got very, very strong quads. And for years, I could blast so hard off the floor that you almost neglect working on the lockout side of the deadlift. So I'm trying to address some weaknesses right now by adding in these type of movements. Not heavy weights again, just focusing on getting volume in. Lots of blood into the glutes. Make sure the glutes are squeezing hard at lockout. Um, basically, it's a bit of a, a funny way of describing the locker, but as soon as that bar's past your knee, imagine you're bending over in prison and you don't want anything to happen. So you're going to get to this point, you're going to focus on clenching the glutes as hard as possible. Make sure they're really tight, nothing's getting in there. You're nice and tight, that will help the hips going to shoot through and strengthen up the lockout of your deadlift. That's Tips. quite offensive. <laughs> it is, but it's a good cue to teach people to, to activate their glutes. Think about, you know, if you tell someone to squeeze their glutes, they don't always know what you mean. Imagine you're trying to break some walnuts between your butt cheeks. That's what you're trying to do. Squeeze as tight as you can with those glutes. Nothing in, nothing out. <laughs> exactly. You can use straps for this. I'm a slash 200 kilo overhand lift. I'm not straps for this. Aren't you doing it for like 12 to 15 reps? Yeah. 
Just to make sure. He'll wish he was using straps. <laughs> Engine hips. That's a good hip action. There. <laughs> nice. Fifteen reps. Twelve. Same as oh. you. Did fifteen. Did twelve. I did fifteen. Right, Edge. What are we finishing with? Okay, we're going to finish with pulse squats and the assault bike. So yeah. it's going to get the heart rate up, but we've been doing mainly legs today as well, so it's going to tax out our legs as well. So we're going to hold a dumbbell. You could use a kettlebell. We're going to do a pulse squat. We're going to do fifteen pulse squats. Okay, so it's really going to burn out your quads. Deep squat. So your hamstrings touch your calves, okay? Keep your knees out. You're gonna stand up, but not all the way, okay? So once we've done 15 of those, we're gonna go over to the bike and hit 15 cows. So it's gonna get the heart rate up, but it's also gonna burn the quads quite a bit as well. How many rounds, just the one? Three. Three? Yeah. <laughs> Don't you be laughing. We'll make sure you do this if you lose another <laughs> now I'm getting in a nice bath, remember? <laughs> or going bold. <laughs> Loz is looking really excited about this in the background. <laughs> Good thing, coming to train with Harry, he just makes me do stuff, so I wouldn't do this stuff on my own, probably. That's 15 already. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it was a fast pace. Good That's pace. Hard. Yeah. This looks like a puker. Come on, look. Nice and deep. Hamstrings touch the calves, knees out. Good. Perfect.
Is there a thick bucket? I need one. Go on, HD, last one. <laughs> but you're trying to power it with your head. <laughs> Come on, Lazzy. Is strong, does he? Your turn. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> I did ten, ten calories once on that bike and I <coughs> nearly died. <laughs> oh going down. How are you feeling, H? That was hard. Yeah. Really hard. It looks hard. Lungs are burning, quads are burning. Everything's burning. <laughs> yeah. That was impressive. Yeah. Big guy like Lawrence. Good work. Good work. Yeah. <laughs> you can talk. Okay, so we're going to sign off. <sighs> Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this video today. Unfortunately, your host is incapacitated, <laughs> as is his co host. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and everything else. <laughs> See you next time. While you're here, guys, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my awesome strength content.